Hi guys, it's Wave Master here. Got another video for you today. Just basically going through how to create your first blog post using WordPress. So basically, I'm going to try and get this done pretty quickly, but at the same time, I want to cover everything you need. And um, if we need more in-depth information about uh, how to do this, I'm going to create a more in-depth video just to accompany this video at a later date. So what we're looking at basically is we've got a website with a blog area such as this one here, which is just a little site I use to sell my web design service locally. And there is a few blog entries here. So what I'm going to do is basically in order to create a new post, I can, if I'm on the website itself, I can go up the top here to new and go to new post. And that adds a new post to my blog. And the other thing I can do is if I go here to my dashboard, and if I've just logged into WordPress, this is usually the screen that you met with. I go to my posts section here. I can either add a new post or view old posts. So there's a few different ways you can do that. I can go add new here, go to posts, add new here, or even up the top here to new and go new post. So for simplicity, because it's at on more pages than not, I go up here to new and type and click post. Okay, so I'm going to close this. And now this is our post screen in WordPress. And this is using the, the Gutenberg editor for WordPress. It used to be a different um, editor for that WordPress used, which I have created a similar video for this uh, in that old editor. But now that we're moving ahead with this new editor, I thought I'd touch on this. So the first thing we want to do, and we can come back and change any of these details at any time, I want to create a title. So maybe you want to call it, uh, maybe it's how to create a website. Maybe that's my post title. Um, just yeah, whatever whatever works well with that. So next thing I want to do is start typing. Now the good news is you don't have to be a genius to do this. You can just start typing. So maybe I want to start off with a sentence like to create a new website, and you hit enter, and you get these little blocks. They're called paragraph blocks, and I simply type. Press enter and the new blocks come along as as I wish. So I can um, add some content here. I'll just copy a bit of text I've got off the side here. Just something off uh, another blog post. Maybe I want to go, boom, paste some text in there. Hit enter, type some more. Well, check out our guide here. Okay, so I've just typed up this really short blog post. And generally most blog posts are going to be longer than this. But for the sake of the video, this is what we're looking at. Now, if I want to actually link this off to another page, Maybe I want to say, check out our guide here. Maybe I want this to be a link. I can highlight this text. And right here, there's a link button. I click on that, and I can give in the URL for my link. If I want to go to Google, I type in HTTP colon slash slash www.google.com. One less Google and spell everything correctly. So if I want to link off to Google, I can type it in there. Click enter. And there we go. But if I want to go to another page in this website, I can click on the link, click the pencil icon, and I can then edit this link. So let's say I want to go to another page in this site. Maybe I want to go link to the blog itself. So I'll type in blog. It'll tick away for a sec and come up with my pages and even uh, some, some blog articles. So let's say oh, I changed my mind. I want to click, go to this here and link off to this. I can also I can press OK. I can then click these three dots open a new tab if I want to or same tab it doesn't really matter so you've got a few options there for your link if I do click this yeah that's basically it opens in a new tab so that is how you can start typing add a link to your post so what happens if I want to continue and I want to add a header so if I type in here here's step one and I want that to be a subheader I'll start typing and say you know, go to your cPanel find the WordPress icon. So I've started typing the next section with a subheading. What I'm going to do is I'm going to click on, I'm going to click on this section after I've typed it. And over here, I can change the block type. So I'll click here and change it to heading. And before you know it, we have our heading there. Now over to the right, we can actually change to a heading one, heading two, heading three, heading four. Generally speaking, I wouldn't use a heading one because the title of your post is pretty much reserved for that heading one tag. So for SEO purposes, I go heading two, and then if you have further subheadings within that heading, you get heading three and same and the same sort of focus from there. Now, like a lot of text editors, if I want to do certain things like center this text, I've got these options here to left, center, and right. I'll go left. Maybe I want to put the new website in italics. I've got the italics. And then I can also bold this whole line by selecting it and pressing bold. So you've got your usual, your usual um, yeah, text 
form formatting settings here available like you would if you're using Microsoft Word or any basic Word editor. So the other thing, other basic I want to touch on, and uh, like I said, if you want to, I'll go into more depth about this editor in another video so you can really find out all the bits and pieces. But what I want to do is I want to add an image. So what I'm going to do is, let's say I want to add an image just above here. First thing I could do is if I want to keep going, I can actually go to here, type enter, and I can select image here. Or one of the things that the way this editor works is always a little plus button. So if I want to add down the bottom, I can add a block here, or I can simply go through and by going to the center of each block and hovering over the top or bottom border, I can add blocks within the content. So this plus button is the same across the board. It's just the location that changes. So maybe I want to add an image in here. I click add block. Now this is where you find all of your icon items that you want to go through. So if you want to add like a bullet point list, um, there's like a cover uh, image module you can use, uh, you can add a gallery, there's all these bits and pieces that you can use to basically you know, create your post. But like I said, another in-depth video which I will uh, link to once in, this, in the description of this video once it's up. But for now we're going to add an image. So I'm going to click on this image module here. As you see, it's actually added in the bottom, which sometimes is a bit of a bug in WordPress. So I'll show you how to move that in a minute. Now, if I want to upload an image, I can click the upload video. If I have a URL from another website, I can actually put that there. But for now, I'm going to go to Media Library. And once again, if I do want to upload, I can go to Upload Files and upload a file there. But I'm going to go got my Media Library here. I'm going to find an image, maybe uh, something that's a bit something like this, something that's already on my site. I can do that as well. I'm going to give it a title. I'm just going to say Phone on Desk. I do recommend you give your images a title and an alt tag um, for search engine optimization purposes. Hit select and it'll pop that image there for me. If I want, I can also create a caption to go under the image such as our websites are responsive. So I've created a basic blog post. I've typed, I can continue to type. And from here, because the image is there, I can just hover underneath and continue to type from here. and finish off my post like that. So that is how I can start writing my first blog post uh, using the editor. Now one thing I do recommend if you are writing a blog post uh, is to obviously break things up with subheadings. Try not to have your your uh, paragraphs too long because they tend to be a little bit intimidating to the eye and people don't want to read it. And um, obviously it's always good to subheading out and even subheading a conclusion such as, you know, uh, what are your thoughts? And then you can go through again, change it to a heading, and I can go through and simply add in, you know, leave a comment, encourage people to respond. Now we'll backtrack a little bit because one thing we can do with this image, if I click on this image, I do have some options and most of your blocks have options off to the right. So this is how you can start typing. If you do want to change things, get a little more customized. Now I can actually click on this image icon here and to the right, I have document settings and block settings. I select this block, I can change the size of the image from thumbnail to medium to full size. I can change the height and width here. I can even choose to have this image link off somewhere. So if I have a URL, I can click custom URL, type in where I want the uh, page to go and open it in a new tab if I want to and simply add in uh, settings to this image here. Another thing I can do is I can actually right align the image. And if I make it smaller, it'll right align with the text around it. Now, the other thing too is that I don't necessarily want this image, I'll just go back to center. I don't want this image here. So what I can do is click the six dots here and drag it to where I want, or I can click the arrows to go up and down. So down, up, up, and I've moved this image above. So I'm gonna move it above the paragraph, I'm gonna right align it. So now we have a right aligned image with text. And those buttons, those options are just here by clicking on the image and switching from left to right to center here. And if you ever want to change the image, the pencil icon is where you want to go, and you can change the image by finding your image library or uploading a new one. Now, the other thing is, if I want to change the appearance of some of my text, let's say this text here, I want to um, really stand out a bit more. So I click this block here this that shows up, scroll down, and you see I've got some block settings. Now, of course, I can change the size from small, I can make the text huge, 
I've got different size settings here. I can even go to medium and then actually give a more specific size along here. Even do what's called a drop cap, which has a large letter at the start. This would be a, a good one to use, say, here. If I go drop cap, the eye starts off and we get this nice drop cap effect on our text. But let's say here I want to change the color. Maybe I want to give the give it a background color, maybe give it a light green. And then maybe I want to give this like a blue text effect or maybe even a green. If it's a bit hard to read, I click on this color wheel and I can pick a color from there or even type in a color value. So you do have some options here for color, text size, using a drop cap, and then you have a few advanced settings if you are into CSS and that sort of thing at the bottom. Not so much a topic for this video, but let's say this is it and we're happy to go. And let's say I decide I don't want to have this particular box here. If I click on this box, I can remove this block by going to the three dots. As before, I can still go up and down with it like I did with the image. But if I click on these three dots, I have some different options. I can copy the box. I can insert something before, insert something after. If I want to use HTML, I can actually click edit as HTML and actually type in some HTML code there. I can also add to reusable blocks, which is a whole different video I've put together and I will link to that below. But if I want to get rid of this, all I do is simply click on the three dots and click remove block. Okay, so now we've typed up our blog post. Now, if I'm not sure I want to publish this yet, maybe I've got to go into town or do something, I can actually just click save draft. And now I have a draft saved for the future if I want to come back and finish this off. So if I do come back, if I head out to the dashboard, and I come back to this draft, okay, I want to go into posts, all posts. You'll see a list of all my posts and the most recent one, how to create a website, is just here. So I can click on this to edit it. So I come back three days later, log in, go to my posts, and I can pick up where I left off. So this is basically how we can go. So what I want to do now is just give that a proofread. So before I publish, I give it a proofread, something I highly recommend, go through, check your spelling. Um, even I would consider using the Grammarly uh, plugin, which I'll link to below as well. It's another really powerful plugin for checking your grammar and your spelling mistakes. It's a more advanced version than what you get with the standard WordPress editor. And I'm ready to go. The other thing is too, if you've got an SEO plugin, you do want to fill in your title and description um, just for SEO purposes. Um, but that's purely if you have that plugin and you're looking at that. Otherwise, if I'm ready to publish, I can publish this post. I can make it public or I can even just make it a private or password protected post. One thing I can also do is schedule this post for a certain date. But for now, I'm going to keep it on immediately and then click publish. And now if I go to view post, which at any stage, if you want to, you can also preview your post by clicking preview. But for now, we've published it, so I'm going to view this post. And you can see we've got our little blog post here on the website. Now, let's say I've published this post and I realized, I've come back again at a later date, maybe I've gone to the blog. And I realized I wouldn't mind having a featured image above this post to make it stand out a bit more. Also, so maybe I go into the post and I discover there's an issue with something I want to fix. Now you can, if you're viewing the page and you're logged in, you can go up to the top here to edit post, which is another way to find a post and update it. So if I go up here to edit post, now I'm back in, I can edit it again and I can update this post if I want to. But the thing I want to do primarily here as a last, as a final uh, thing we, we're going to look at is I'm going to go to the document panel on the right here and there's a few options. Now I want to go to permalink here and I want to, if I, for search engine optimization purposes, I want to get rid of a few dead words and shorten this down. So maybe I just want to call it create-website, which changes the link. And also if I want to give it a category, if I have some categories, if see I've got blog updates here, I can add a new category or I can pick a category, maybe I've got like um, blog updates or tutorials or personal news. And But finally, I want to add a featured image. So when I click the featured image tab here under the document section on this right sidebar, I click set featured image, I can upload a file, or I can go to media library, and I can choose another image such as this one, click select. And now I have this featured image. 
So if I go to update, I've now updated that post. And if I've made any changes here, those will also update. So if I go to view this post, it now shows the updated version. And that featured image, if I go over to blog, you'll see the featured image is now ab above and we have this nice visual um, look to our post. And I can do that with these other posts here if I want to is add images. So that's basically how you can set up a blog post, publish it, add a featured image. It's really basic. It's as simple as going into add a new post, start typing away, add your images. And when you're done, proofread, publish, and then you can always come back and tweak it at a later date. And the one final bit of advice I'll give you is once you've actually created a blog post is don't just simply post and walk away. If you want people to read it, go out there and actually put it on Facebook, share it around, um, learn how to promote your website and your blog post so that way you get people actually reading what you've written. So I hope you found that video useful. It is just a basic intro. If you're looking to learn more about the Gutenberg editor, I will put a link below to a more in-depth tutorial showing you all the various bits and pieces showing you how to do certain things with the Gutenberg editor. So uh, I hope you found that video useful. If you want more like this, please consider subscribing below. And um, also, if you do want to start a website, I do have a free course on online showing you how to do that, uh, which I'll also link to below. So. There's a whole bunch of resources below for you in the description. Otherwise, I hope to see you again soon, and thanks for watching.